If you've worked with Power Query for any time at all, you've probably had to deal with importing data from something like a text file. Now, text files are typically delimited. In other words, there's a character that indicates the separation of one column from another. Now, most delimited text files that you work with are probably either tab delimited like the one on the left or comma delimited like the one on the right. But every now and then, you might find yourself having to work with something like this. This is what's called a fixed width file. Now, fixed width files have been around for decades, and they've pretty much fallen out of favor because they're not a very efficient way to store data. In a fixed width file, every field has a fixed amount of width, and they use that width whether the data needs it or not. Now, in this case, the event code column needs approximately 45 characters of space to support the maximum amount of data that could be held. But if you don't use all 45 characters, the remaining characters are just wasted. Now, they look very nice from a human point of view, but with all those extra wasted characters having to be stored, it makes for a larger than necessary file size. Now, if you do have to import a fixed width file, we need to first determine the positions where each column begins. Notepad is a great application to figure this out because you can just place your cursor anywhere in the text file and then read down here what line and column position that cursor has fallen, the line being the row. So if we were to place our cursor directly in front of the very first character of a record, it says we're in column one. If we put it in front of the very first character of the next column, tax report, we're in column 46, cycle would be column 66, tracking code 90, and status would be 135. So we have to make note of these positions. The catch is that Power Query starts counting at zero, whereas Notepad is starting to count from one. So all these character positions that we discover, we're going to have to subtract one. So I'll start a little second note down here just so we can keep track of the numbers. We know that the data starts at the very first column, column one, but we have to deduct one, so that's going to be column zero. The tax report starts in column 46, so we'll deduct one and that will be column 45. The cycle starts in column 66, so we'll deduct one, 65. The tracking code starts in column 90, so that will be 89. And then finally, the status begins in column 135, so that will be 134. These are the numbers we're going to feed into the Power Query connector. I've started a blank Excel workbook. We'll go up to data and then get data from text or CSV. I'll browse out and find my data file. Here it is, I'll click import. Power Query does its best guess at trying to figure out what your delimiter is. And you can see here at the very top, it says, it appears that this is a fixed width file. And I'm guessing that your columns are in these specific positions. If we bring back our little note, we can see that Power Query did an excellent job of figuring out where these column positions fell. Now, in my experience, the files might tend to have some subtle variances in them, which causes Power Query's guessing system to be thrown off a little bit. So if any of this is incorrect, you can reprogram it. And even if it does get it wrong, let's say that this came in here and split it at the 75th column position, you can see in the preview that this clearly isn't being separated correctly. Or if we said the 95th character position, and then you can see how the cycle and the tracking number have been somewhat blended. So if any of this is incorrect, you can just manually put in the numbers that you need. But do check your preview. Once that's done, we'll hit transform data, send it into Power Query, and then from this point forward, it's just standard Power Query processing. Things like promoting first row's headers, setting data types, filtering, sorting, grouping, etc. So that's importing a fixed width text file. It's not exactly a life-changing feature, but when you're in these situations where you're given this kind of file, you'll now know how to deal with it. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had to deal with this kind of file. And if you have, my guess is your experience is becoming more and more rare. Thank you for taking the time to watch. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.